We want you to hit that share button right now and spread this message of empowerment around the world. This is part two of our new series, The DNA of Destiny. And God has a word for you tonight. I'm, amen. So we, we are uh, uh, excited about what God is doing in this ministry, about Kingdom School of Ministry that is right around the corner. How would you like to spend an entire week with Dr. Trim, with her teaching you eight power-packed courses Well, it's happening in Atlanta, Georgia, and you don't want to miss it. Register now. All of the information is right there on your screen, kingdomu.net, kingdom with a U, dot net, understanding the kingdom, the purpose of the church, praise and worship, kingdom economics and biblical finances. It's a week of impartation to radically transform the way that you think about life and the way that you do life. You have to be there. We encourage you to bring a friend so that you can... In, in, enlarge your scope in the next year to, to come, in the years to come. Amen? Well, tonight, we want you to be tweeting up about what God is speaking, and we, we want you to use the hashtag DestinyDNA, at Cindy Trim. And when God speaks a nugget of revelation to you, let the whole world know it using that hashtag and connect with what we're doing around the world. We're not going to waste any more time. We're going to bring right to the platform Dr. Cindy Trim. Come on, give her a hand. Last week, we began to introduce you to the story of Lot and Lot's wife and his children. And we have yet to excavate that entire text. But I want to take a step backwards to show you how powerful a decision is when it comes to your destiny. You see two individuals, you see Abraham and Lot. Lot goes one way and he makes a decision that leads him into Sodom and Gomorrah and it changed his his destiny. Abraham goes another way and after there was a separation, God speaks. In this season, you've got to be careful who you're connected to. It might mean that God is separating you from some people to bring other people into your life. He's creating a vacuum. Because when the wrong people leave your life, wrong things stop happening and the right things start happening. But in Genesis chapter 13, the Bible said, and the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot was separated from him, lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art. If you cannot see yourself beyond where you are, tomorrow is going to look exactly like yesterday. You've got to be able to look from where you are. The Bible said, for all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if any man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land of the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamar, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Fantastic story. As we study uh, uh, for this particular series, I find myself in the book of Genesis. Genesis is the book of beginnings. We see how God began to change Abraham's life. And he made a series of decisions that actually altered his destiny. But when God spoke to him, he spoke to him in specificities. He was very specific. And then Abraham moved on the word of God. And this is a season where we need to hear the voice of God. I'm believing that God will attune your ear and that he would deliver you from the spirit of deafness. That you will be able to hear God clearly. Because he wants to give you a vision for your future. God instructed him, lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art. One of the things I extrapolated out of this, you cannot start from where you are not. You can only start from where you are. Wishing things were different doesn't make them different. You've just got to be able to say, it is what it is, it ain't what it ain't. I'm going to start with what I got and where I am. The other thing that I learned from this text is that you've got to be able to stop listening to your past because it has nothing new to say to you. It has nothing new to share with you. The past is past. And all that matters now is that from this point in your life, you are moving forward. 
You are committed to taking your life out of neutral and living it to its fullest potential. And so today I want to talk about the art of putting yourself where you see yourself. Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art. You see, a lot of people may see you differently than what you see yourself. And they may see your life unfolding in a different way. It's not about what people consider is right for your life. It's what you consider. It's not how people look at you and how they look at your past. It's how you look at you. I grew up in abject poverty. And at two, my, mother, my father abandoned my mother. So I grew up in a single parent home. Now, a lot of people would feel sorry for me, but I didn't feel sorry for me. Why? Because you, 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 you play with the hands that are dealt you. And just because your nativity is one way, it doesn't mean that your ending has to look like your nativity. I felt like my life was a blessing. Now, other people felt sorry for me, but I've never felt sorry for myself one day. Many people called our family dysfunctional because we were the only family in the community that was single family. But I never called myself dysfunctional. Why? Because although we did not have finances, we had stability in the home. Although we didn't have a lot of clothes, we had love in the home. Although we didn't have a lot of stuff, we, we, we had direction. We had a role model. And so what people call dysfunction, I didn't feel like it was anything dysfunctional. Because although we grew up in a single parent home, we grew up in a stable home. And there's a lot of people that grow up with both parents that don't have stability and never had stability. And so what people, it, it, was, it didn't matter how people saw me, it mattered how I saw myself. And I didn't feel like I was responsible for my parents' actions. I felt like I was responsible for my action. Lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art. When God speaks, he's going to speak specificity. And wherever you are today, I want to let you know that you have everything you need to succeed. You have everything you need to succeed. Learn how to learn backwards and lean forward. And that's going to be your motto all year. Learn backwards, but lean forward. Lean into your future. Don't lean into the past. Lean into the future. The Bible said, lift up now thine eyes. God told him to look from the place where he was, not to look at where he was, but look from where he was. Never let where you are be the deciding factor for where you can be. Never let who you are today sabotage who you have the potential to be tomorrow. Most people will end up in the same place tomorrow where they are today because they never put thought into where they want it to be tomorrow. Your vision is what God gives you, and that's going to help you to think God's thoughts for you. The quality of your thoughts today determine the quality of your life tomorrow because your thoughts determine who you are. Your thoughts determine what you do. Your thoughts determine who you marry. Your thoughts determine what you acquire. Your thoughts determine where you live. Your thoughts determine who you love. Your thoughts determine who you become. Your thoughts determine where you work. Your thoughts determine what you accomplish. Your thoughts determine what you read. In other words, you will never have more, go further, accomplish more than your thoughts allow you to. Could things be the way they are because you are the way you are? And what one thing can you change that can change everything? You've got to be able to understand that anytime you get sick and tired of doing something, being somewhere, wearing something, sitting on something, being with a person, you are always only one thought away from being somewhere else, dressing somewhere else, speaking somewhere else. It's your thoughts. You will never go further. You will never have more. You will never accomplish more than your thoughts. Forget about what people think about you. Forget about what people are saying about you. It's all about 
about your thoughts. The scripture said, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. What you speak is the secondary conduit of thought. The primary conduit of destiny is your thinking. What you are speaking outside cannot compare with your internal dialogue. My, my fiancé asked me this question. He said, you know, uh, uh, who do you listen to the most? And I want to ask you that same question. Who do you listen to the most? Who? Write it down. Who do you listen to the most? And you're going to be surprised what the answer is. You listen to yourself the most. The, the greatest conversation that you will ever have is with yourself. It's your internal dialogue. And one of the things you've got to understand is this, that if God has greatness for you, you don't need an IQ to get it because your background, your education, or your IQ can prohibit you from thinking. And never lose the power to think for yourself. Thinking is free. You do it every single day. You don't need a degree to think. Everybody thinks. You don't need, you don't need anything other than your brain to think. And as long as you have a brain, you're going to have the ability to think. That means that you are literally what you think. The state of your life is in the direct is the direct product of thought. Therefore, when you change the way you think, you will change your life. You will alter your destiny. People that think about their future engineer and shape it before they get there. People that do not put thought into or think about their future have nothing when they get there. And therefore, your body is a, cha is a channel of thought that exists to give you success and prosperity, but it will give you success and prosperity the moment you think successful thoughts and prosperous thoughts. When you walk out of here, I want you to go home and I want you to begin to create a thinking environment. And I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to carve out 30 minutes a day and dedicate it to thinking. Not doing, not ch channel surfing, not surfing the net, not uh, looking at timelines on Facebook. I want you to take 30 minutes every single day to think about your future, to put some thoughts into it. And I want you to think for yourself about yourself. I want you to think outside of the box because there is power in thought. As a man thinketh in his heart, in your own heart, so is he. When you think, you have the power to take your life out of black and white and put it into technicolor with sound effects. God said to him, look from the place where you are. In other words, what you imagine will emerge. What you imagine will emerge. If you would look at Genesis chapter 11, let's read this. Verse number one, the Bible said, and the whole earth was one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build a city with a tower whose top that may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and tower. Now watch this. It's important. The moment they said, let us make brick, there was nothing called a brick. What's a brick? This is the power of thought. And as soon as they thought it and spoke it, they were able to create it. As soon as you think it and speak it, you are shaping your own future. This is the stuff that destiny is made of. But I want you to note something. This is what they said. Let us go and build a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven. And let us make us a name. Watch this. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Listen to me carefully. Be careful what you release out of your mouth. If you don't expect to see it tomorrow, don't talk about it today. And I'm going to show you something. Verse number five. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man built. And the Lord said, behold, the people is as one. And they have one language. And they, they began to do. And nothing, no, now nothing will be restrained from them 
which they have imagined to do. Nothing is going to be restrained from them which they imagine to do. Now, something else happens after this. The Bible says, verse number seven, go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another. So the Lord did what? Scattered them abroad. Listen, they were driven by fear and fear determined their speech and their speech created their destiny. They were scattered. So God didn't arbitrarily scatter them. They spoke it and they gave the scattering permission to exist in the earth realm. Now, how do we know? The Bible said, and it's a law, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And you've got to understand this. Just because you say this is not what I want, it doesn't mean that that's not what's going to happen. Because your mind does not register the word not. I don't want to be hurt. And guess what? You end up getting what? Hurt. I don't want to be poor. And guess what? You end up staying in poverty. Why? Because you have not told your mind what you want. They say, we don't want to be scattered. Well, what do you want? Do you want unity? So you've got to begin to craft your words along the line of what you want and not what you don't want. Can I get an amen? If you don't want to say amen, can I get a sure you're right? Are you getting this? I don't want to be hurt. What do you want? I want to be loved. Then say that. You're getting it. Somebody's getting it. What do you want? When your mind is empty, your future is empty. Imagination determines your possession. Imagination determines your progression. Imagination de determines your influence. Imagination determines your power. A lot of us use our mind and our brain to memorize. But I'm going to tell you something. There is something much stronger than memory, and that is vision. See, even if you can't memorize scripture, take your Bible with you and open it up. You could read it. Imagination is more powerful than memorization. And when you were educated in a Babylonian school system, they played more emphasis on what? Memorization than they did what? Visualization. Teach me how to envision the future. The Bible said, look, northward, southward, eastward, westward. Watch this. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Let me ask you a question. How far into your future can you see? You see, some people can only see to the end of the week or the end of the month. But the scripture says, as far as you can see, that's what I'm going to give you. How far can you see? Imagine the possibility. Can you see yourself amongst the best, if not the best in the industry? Can you see yourself as president, CEO of your own Fortune 500 or Fortune 100 company? Can you see your products branded in the industry as number one and in number one position in the marketplace? Can you see your name on the cover of New York Times best-selling list? Can you see all the people's lives you have touched and changed? and empowered and influenced through your nonprofit organization. Can you see yourself sitting on a lot, yacht, sailing along the Mediterranean coast with me for lunch, having lunch with me? Can you see your face in lights on the side of a billboard? Can you see the name of your business on a large corporate building that you own? I just came from a foreign country, and when I left the airport, my name was on a billboard. How did it get on 
on a billboard because I saw it before it got there. Can you see? Can you see yourself walking across a stage with a diploma in your hand? Can you see yourself as a partner in the number one law firm in the world? Can you see yourself owning your own restaurant, winning the gold medal in an Olympic game? Can you see yourself on the top of the letter of success or breaking the proverbial glass ceiling? Can you see yourself with the spouse of your dream in a happy family setting, celebrating your 30th anniversary? Can you imagine people singing your songs a hundred years from now? What about hosting your own reality show? Can you see that? Can you see yourself making the world a better place by giving back to society in your own unique way? Can you see yourself standing in a stadium with millions of people listening to you as you deliver one of the most compelling messages anyone has ever delivered before. Can you see the crowds go wild as you inspire them through dance and music? Can you see? Can you see the sparkle in the eyes of children as you teach them? Can you see the gra gratitude on the face of a patient when you tell them they are disease free? Can you see your children growing up to be successful adults? Can you see your vision of helping, coaching, leading, writing, building, preaching, teaching, driving, become a reality. Imagine the possibility. If you can see it from the eyes of your own mind, then you can achieve it. You can live the life of your dream. You can succeed. How? Do you see yourself five years from now? How do you see yourself 10 years from now? How do you see yourself 20 years from now? As far as you can see, look northward, eastward, westward, southward. Can you see yourself? Give your neighbor a high five. Say, I can see myself. I can see myself driving. I can see myself giving. I can see myself living. As far as you can see. You got to be able to act your, act, activate your faith. To live beyond where you are. And when you live by faith, amazing, spectacular things happen. And they won't shock you anymore understand how powerful vision is, you will no longer look at facts to activate your faith, to come into agreement with the awesome plan and the purposes that God has for you. God is about to put awesome back into your life. Look at Habakkuk 1 and 5. The Bible says, behold ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. That's the word of the Lord. I'm going to work a work, but you're not going to believe. In other words, God is going to put awesome back into your life. You're going to have awesome children. You're going to have an awesome marriage. You're going to have an awesome career. You're going to have awesome friends. You're going to wear awesome clothes. You're going to drive an awesome car. You're going to go on an awesome vacation. You're going to have an awesome future. You're going to have an awesome experience. How does God do it? He's going to do it by revelation. As soon as Lot, who is blinding you? Who is distracting you? Who is corroding your faith? Revelation gives you a glimpse of God's future plans for your life. And it provides you with the opportunity to structure your life and garner new strategies and write your vision accordingly. When God gives you a vision, he gives you the ability to make decisions. A vision is always preparation for the future. One of the things that God said to Habakkuk as he was looking around, God said in Habakkuk 2, 2 to 4, write the vision, make it plain upon the tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end, it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And then it says, but the just shall live by faith. Your struggle is over. Your days of struggle is over. 
From the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2 to 4, I extrapolate 20 principles that will change your destiny. Write the vision. Make it plain. And so tonight, this is going to be a quickie, a drive-by shooting, a cliffhanger. We're going to empower you to do something great. How far can you see? You're going to have to tune in again for these 20 principles that's going to revolutionize your life. What am I speaking about? The art of putting yourself where you see yourself. I want to welcome you once again to our brand new series. A brand new series, The DNA of Destiny. Our Father, Lord God, we give you praise and honor and glory. We're standing here, sitting here. We're in our cars. We're in our living rooms. We're with our life groups listening to this message. Something is being activated in us where we can see ourselves living differently, acting differently, owning something more. It's not a figment of our imagination. It is your will. You said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. Thank you, Father, for letting us know that you have something great. You are up to something great, and you have you, me, us, in your mind. I bless you now for this time and this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you are inspired by that message, continue to make some noise. We thank you for joining us tonight from around the world. If you're, if you're with a group of friends right now, you may be in your life group. We want you to take some time and start talking about vision. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? And what are some of the steps that you're going to take to see that you get there? We want to connect with you on a deeper level. We encourage you to partner with us, both financially and through prayer, and also by attending many of our events that are throughout the year, including Kingdom School of Ministry. It's coming this July. It's eight power-packed courses that you don't want to miss. And then at the end of this year, we have End Your Year Strong, which is two to three power-packed days of impartation to give you the prophetic momentum that you need to step into your new year with power. It's going to be incredible events that you don't want to miss. Yes. All the information is right there on your screen, and we're glad that you've joined us. Hit that Give button now and be a part of bringing hope to the hopeless around the world. Hit the share button now and spread the message of empowerment.